Pete Davidson is a well-known comedian who is most well known for his role on Saturday Night Live, and he also had a brief engagement to the singer Ariana Grande. And Pete Davidson is also somebody in the very public spotlight who has been very open and honest about his struggles with addiction as well as borderline personality disorder. And there's a lot of struggles that come along with that. And when we understand these types of disorders, we can better understand the behaviors that we're all seeing. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, something I like to do is pull different topics from pop culture or the YouTube community. I'm very passionate about mental health. So I try to take these things and see what we can all learn from them. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So yes, I will be talking about borderline personality disorder. This is a controversial diagnosis. I will make more videos about that. Some people deny this diagnosis. Some people believe it's not a real diagnosis. It is present in the DSM, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, but full disclaimer, I am not a licensed therapist. I'm not a licensed psychologist. I am somebody who has had my own personal mental health struggles, and I also worked in a dual diagnosis addiction treatment center, where that means that we uh, specialize in addiction as well as mental health issues. So I have personally worked with many, many, many clients, hundreds if not thousands of people who have struggled with borderline personality disorder as well as addiction, much like like Pete Davidson, all right? So anyways, I think this is an important topic to discuss. So let's kind of just give like a brief TLDR of Pete Davidson over the past couple years, okay? So Pete Davidson, um, I love him on SNL, funny guy. Nothing against Pete Davidson, he's a good dude. Good, good, good dude, right? But he's constantly in the news for a variety of reasons. So Pete Davidson's father actually died in 9-11. He was one of the first responders on the scene and he actually passed away. Um, and Pete Davidson later, you know, developed mental health issues. He developed an addiction. He's been in rehab multiple times for his addiction. Now, something that he talked about um, in various, uh, you know, interviews is that he realized that his problem is his borderline personality disorder and not addiction, okay? And we'll circle back around to that pretty soon here. But Pete Davidson started to get a lot of notoriety when he started dating Ariana Grande. So Ariana Grande was with Mac Miller for many years, okay? Mac Miller unfortunately passed away from a drug overdose last year. So Pete Davidson, he started dating Ariana Grande and very soon after, very soon after, he asked her to marry him and she said yes. So they were engaged, there was a lot of publicity around this, and then after the death of Mac Miller and some of the controversies that arose after Mac Miller's passing away, um, Pete Davidson and Ariana Grande broke that engagement off. Soon after that, Pete Davidson um, was on Instagram and he posted some very cryptic things. And it seemed like he was thinking about taking his own life. And Twitter and social media and the news was freaking out. Wellness checks were being called on Pete Davidson. Uh, Machine Gun Kelly actually went out to uh, meet up with Pete Davidson to check in on him, see how he was doing. He like caught the, the first flight, excellent friend. And Pete Davidson ended up, I think, I, I believe it was even on a Saturday, and he ended up showing up to Saturday Night Live, okay? So he showed up, he wasn't in the episode, but he showed up there, so he was in a safe place with friends. He ended up going to a mental health treatment facility. I think he only stayed there for about a week, all right? So there was a lot going on in Pete Davidson's life. He, he has been very controversial with some of the, um, things that he said on Saturday Night Live, some things he said on social media. He tends to get um, bullied, but a lot of celebrities get bullied because you're in that public spotlight. Not everybody's gonna like you. That's something that all of us have to deal with, even us little YouTubers, we have to deal with that. But it greatly affected his mental health, right? So he ended up going to this treatment center. He was there for not too long. And not long after his stay in that mental health treatment center, he was back to work and um, most notably, he is now in a serious relationship with the actress Kate Beckinsale, all right? So, like I said, like I said, Pete Davidson has been diagnosed, he has a dual diagnosis. So what I was talking about with, you know, the treatment center I was working at, Pete Davidson is the type of client that I worked with many, many, many times, right? He had an addiction as well as borderline personality disorder. And here's, here's the reason why I'm talking about it, because 
when you understand, when you understand these types of mental illnesses, and again, I'm not a licensed therapist or psychologist, I am just somebody who's very passionate about borderline personality disorder. But when you understand these things, you start to understand, it starts to make sense. You're, you, you start to understand, you look at it and you're like, oh my God, okay, now it, it makes sense. These behaviors make sense. They're not as erratic, like they are erratic and impulsive in some cases, but they make more sense that we understand them, right? And again, I think it's important to look at these situations for people in the public spotlight who have these diagnoses, because, especially because Borderline personality disorder is so stigmatized. I've talked about this in, a, in the last video I made about BPD, which is that many therapists, many psychologists, many people, like mental health professionals, do not want to work with people with borderline personality disorder because of those symptoms. And I just disagree with that in, in every way, shape, or form. I'm going to make a video about why some people deny their borderline personality diagnoses. I'm reading a great book called The Buddha and the Borderline, and she talks about that a lot of when she first got diagnosed and meeting a lot of people who denied their diagnosis. But this is something that we need to talk about. So. So to keep it in the realm of Pete Davidson for another few minutes here, it's, so we look at, like I mentioned, he has an, uh, he has an addiction as well as a, a, a mental illness, borderline personality disorder. And he talked about in an interview how his problem is with his mental illness, it's not with substances. Unfortunately, that's not the way these things work. You have both things, both things need to be treated. So you do have both an addiction as well as a mental illness. Like it's not just one or the other, they coincide. And one of the things is, like when we understand this, when we understand how these things cross over with each other, if you look at the diagnosis, the symptoms of borderline personality disorder, as stated in the DSM, it talks about the risky behaviors that somebody with borderline personality disorder takes, and one of them is substance abuse, okay? So borderline personality disorder, one of the best descriptions I've, I've heard for it is it's like being an emotional burn victim. Okay, and it means that you're extremely sensitive to your emotions. Your emotions go into extremes. So you get extremely happy and extremely excited, and then you get like extremely depressed or extremely angry or extremely anxious, right? This is why borderline personality disorder is often misdiagnosed as bipolar disorder because of those highs and lows, all right? But we start to look at this, and when we understand like his substance abuse problems, when you understand the symptoms of borderline personality disorder, you're like, oh, Okay, that makes sense. Now, what would lead what would lead somebody to just starting to date somebody like Ariana Grande and getting engaged very soon after? Well, when you understand how people with borderline personality disorder have these intense emotions, like they don't just kind of like somebody, they fall in love with somebody, all right? A lot of people who struggle with borderline personality disorder dive deep into relationships really deep and all they can think about is that other person how they want to spend the rest of their life with that person right because when you understand the symptoms it makes sense but people with borderline personality disorder they also have a very intense often unrealistic fear of abandonment right so it's common to see in some cases why people with borderline personality disorder, they get engaged very quickly or they'll move in with somebody very quickly, right? So now it starts to make a little sense why these things happen. So when you see Pete Davidson going from one serious relationship to another, right? Like some people would sit back and say, oh man, like you were just engaged to Ariana Grande for a very long time. Like then you went through a mental health uh, facility and now you're in a very serious relationship. Like, whoa, Pete, slow down, take a little bit of a break. But when you understand borderline personality disorder, it starts to make sense, okay? Then we look at the big scare that happened when he went on social media and was talking about um, not wanting to live anymore and things like that. Well, another um, common symptom uh, or trait of people with borderline personality disorder in some cases is that they, they, they threaten suicide or they attempt suicide. Many people with borderline personality disorder have self-harming behaviors, okay? So then it starts to make sense. Like all these things start coming together and they make sense. Now, borderline personality disorder is a treatable mental illness. 
but it takes treatment. Whether it's 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 uh, like individual therapy, some people do dialectical behavioral therapy. Um, they recommend that that's in like groups and it's kind of like this like whole thing, but you can also practice dialectical behavioral therapy one-on-one -on -one with a therapist. But there is treatment for borderline personality disorder. Something that I absolutely love working with clients in the treatment center was people who struggle with borderline personality disorder and addiction and felt extremely hopeless. And then I see how they grow and they change over the coming months and years and they become this completely new person. So while they, they still have that diagnosis of borderline personality disorder, they are living an amazing life because they have developed the tools necessary to manage their symptoms. So it's like being an emotional burn victim who has figured out like figured out a way to heal, okay? And sometimes that wound reopens, but that is why therapy is kind of an ongoing process. So anyways, the last thing I wanna touch on in this video is I just talked about this um, in the video I made about David Dobrik, the video I made this morning, if you wanna go check that out, it'll be linked up in the info card. But anyways, here's the thing. Like some of you who have been around my channel for a while, you understand these the, the controversies I've been involved in and everything, but here's the thing, and I, I can only speak for myself. I can only speak for myself. But I, I think, my, in my opinion, when we see these public figures who have a diagnosis, like if we talk about them in a respectful way, which is something that, you know, I did okay with in some cases, but screwed up with in other cases, like it helps out the greater good because some of you, maybe even by watching this video, you have a better understanding of somebody in your life who has borderline personality disorder. But for me, so I'm somebody who, you know, obviously I had a substance use uh, disorder. I've been diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder. I've been diagnosed with depression. And this is just me personally, but if you wanna talk about those things, go for it. Like for example, some of you know that I work, 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 work. And part of that is my addictive behaviors manifesting in a different way. By you explaining that to other people or leaving comments, you know, some, <laughs> some people aren't really, leaving those comments to educate others. But anyways, it might help people understand me a little bit better. So as a creator, like for me, like you guys all have a free pass to like talk about this because it might help people understand me better. And something that I would wish for, and it's something that I'm still tiptoeing around and trying to figure out the best way to do this is I would hope, I would, I would hope that more creators were open to these types of videos because when you look at other creators, if you start to understand what they're struggling with and you understand the ins and outs of that disorder, like even if it's in like, you know, like my knowledge, like of a lay person who's just done a lot of research and my own personal studying, like it helps, under, uh, it helps us understand like I watch certain creators or I watch certain people in the public spotlight and because I have like a basic knowledge of that specific disorder, I see their behaviors and I'm like, oh, that makes sense. Like these are common characteristics of somebody with, you know, PTSD or BPD or bipolar disorder or ADHD or whatever it is. So I don't know, I, I wish that, I know it's something very personal to a lot of people, but I wish we were in a place where we, we, we didn't mind other people talking about this because I think, I think it would help the audience understand a lot better. I think it would help the audience be a lot more empathetic towards people in the public spotlight when they understood these things. Like the video I made about Britney Spears, I made that video because a lot of people don't understand how mental health treatment works. A lot of people don't understand how mental health medications work. Like I just want to increase the conversation about mental health. But anyways, let me know down in the comments below, Like. Does, do, do videos like this help you get a better understanding of borderline personality disorder, whether it's you who is struggling with it, or maybe you know somebody who's struggling with it, does it help you give a better, get a better understanding? Let me know down in the comments below. All right, but anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton, ton, a ton of videos. I'm addicted to making videos. No, I'm kidding, I got it. I got it under control. I work about eight to nine hours a day. Anyways, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you would like to help support the channel, help support what I'm doing here, 
here, you can click the tab on that Patreon icon right there, all right? Thanks again so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time.